in this video we try to understand why it is wrong to select delta equal epsilon in certain delta epsilon proofs of limits so let's look at the uh, the limit definition the common limit definition so we write at the limit when x goes to a fx are uh, equal l uh, if and only if uh, we can prove that for all epsilon there is a delta positive uh, such that x minus a less than delta and less than uh, zero uh, implies uh, fx minus l uh, less than epsilon so this is what we normally call the common definition uh, common epsilon delta definition that we use to prove a limit exists um, but the problem is this definition is not exactly correct so we're going to see why this is not correct so let's try to uh, consider this problem so consider Um, so we try to prove that so let's say consider the problem of let's say we try to prove the limit when x goes to 4 the square root x equal to and this we know because the reason is the square root function is continuous so we can plug in the value so so it works so that's true uh, so in this problem you can see that the fx equal the square root function uh, so that is defined for x greater than or equal zero actually that's that's the problem that's where the problem comes so that means if you have a function which is which has a discontinuity at any point other than a we cannot choose a delta equal epsilon it's going to create a problem so that's what we're trying to understand so let's look at the argument so um so we write so I'm going to work with the rough work. So because for these problems, you always have to do a rough work and figure out what is the actual delta. So I'm going to do the rough work. A rough work. Uh, so uh, let's say for um, given uh, epsilon, for given uh, epsilon positive, uh, what we need to prove is uh, square root x, that's a function, minus 2, that's the limit we get less than epsilon that's what we need to prove we need to end up but we know that uh, so this is implied by this one so you can say uh, so this is like a if and only if statement so if this is true then this is also true what we can do is we can multiply by the conjugate that's what we normally do for square root functions so we're going to multiply by the conjugate top and bottom and then you can see that this is a so this is if and only if so that means if one implies the other now um, you can simplify the top so this again uh, if and only if so the top simplifies to uh, x minus 4 so that's exactly what we are waiting for the bottom is positive so we can remove the absolute sign so we can write it like that so this is less than epsilon uh, now what we're going to do so after that it's going to be only one direction so so that one is implied by what we're going to do we're going to pick the largest value of this function because if you pick the largest value of this function then this is uh, this is going to uh, imply because you can see that so the observation is square root has to be greater than or equal to zero so that means if you pick the largest value and the implication is going to be that way so you can see that uh, the largest value is absolute value uh, absolute of x minus 4 so the largest value of that that function 1 over square root x is 1 half because you can see that uh, since the uh, square root x is greater than or equal to 0 if you add something positive it's going to be smaller because we add in something to denominate it so this is true and the implication go that way and again we can write that so that's implication again to this direction so you can see that you, uh, instead of um, one half i can say one because then the implication goes that way because if you say one the one half is definitely smaller than that so that means the implication goes that way so the last two only going the left side the top uh if and only if so this says that you have an option to select epsilon equal delta 
because you can see that this is exactly what we need so so the problem is actually this is wrong you cannot do that uh, so let's see why this is this is wrong uh, so uh, what we normally do is in a, in a regular form because I have seen that like everywhere uh, so uh, sometimes like we say so I'm write in red uh, it looks like we may choose um, delta equal epsilon uh, but but this is this is not true so let's see why so let's look at the actual function now and also in theory you can pick any smaller ep uh, epsilon so for example you can say delta equal epsilon half okay so in theory like you may pick any smaller you may pick any smaller any smaller uh, epsilon so like for example epsilon half that also works in, in the in the regular theory but that's what we think but all of them are wrong so uh, so let's look at the reason now so I'm gonna look at the graph. Uh, so this is the graph of this curved function uh, so it's gonna go like this and it's an inclusive function uh, so this is the value we uh, pick so we're gonna evaluate at 4 so that means the value is 2 because uh, it's a continuous function you can just plug in the value now the problem so because we know that by the definition this should be true for any epsilon that we pick so it doesn't matter because it's true for all epsilon because the theory says that for all epsilon there is a corresponding delta which is a function of epsilon so that's why it's such that uh, so this is true if this is true if so in this case 4 is true then the other side is square root x minus 2 has to be less than epsilon so say if if the first one is true then this should be but we see the problem now what I'm going to do I will pick because it has to be true for all epsilon let's pick epsilon equal 6 so I'm going to say okay so let uh, epsilon which is exactly equal to delta equal 6 and we can see that this is true this is positive now what does that mean this means if you look at uh, this condition so this says that this says that this is less than uh, delta uh, like a uh, delta which is 6 so this simply says that if you write in the expanded form so this is the um, number line so we have uh, number 4 uh, we, we don't need that because it's greater than and then we're gonna go uh, 6 units away from that so this is uh, 4 plus 6 so which is 10 and then we have to go to the other side which is 4 minus 6 which is negative 2 so that means what it says that if you pick any x here uh, then it should satisfy the condition and we can see that it looks like so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pick a value for example let's say I'm gonna pick x1 equal negative 1 because negative 1 is in this interval so if we x equal negative 1 what will happen so you can see it is uh, so it is the interval is going from negative 2 to uh, 10 so I pick the value here so that's the value I'm gonna pick x1 equal negative 1 and then you can see that for this value the the implication there are two sides the first side and the second side and you can see the first side is true so you can see if you pick x1 uh, equal negative 1 and you can see that so this is this is true so 0 less than uh, x1 which is 1 and uh, which is actually negative 1 so you can see uh, negative 1 minus uh, 4 and then uh, so this this is actually uh, less than uh, 6 because uh, you can see that you see that this is equal to 5 so this is true so this side is true but what happened to the other side you can see the other side you're gonna get for this value negative 1 square root minus 2 less than epsilon which is equal to 6 is this the case and you can see that this is wrong the problem is this is not even defined so you can see that it's not defined so that means this side is false so you can see uh, the left hand side is true but the right hand side is false so that means this implication does not work anymore
So that means this proof is completely wrong after that. So, so now what's the problem here? So you can see that we cannot pick uh, epsilon, delta equal epsilon when there is a discontinuity because according to the proof, epsilon can be anything. So if you pick a large epsilon, this always falls. So if there's a discontinuity other, uh, at any other point other than A, then we cannot pick delta equal epsilon. So that means the correct proof has to be, and that's what I'm always using. So like this, you need to consider the domain. So the correct proof, a uh, correct uh, definition has to be, we can say limit uh, x goes to a fx equal l means, or if and only if, means for all epsilon, there is a delta positive such that for all x in the domain of the function, we have to add that part. Then uh, the rest is true. So x minus a less than delta implies fx minus l less than epsilon. In this case, yes, you can pick a delta equal epsilon for, for even for this problem because we have that extra condition there. So that means only for the values which is in the domain. So that means that does not create a problem now because that value is not in the domain. So we don't worry about what's going to happen there because it's not it's not true for that part. So if you start with the false, then uh, so you know that in logics, uh, so this statement is true uh, because this is, we starting one is always for uh, this is false. So that means your definition has to be like that. Otherwise, the, the argument is completely wrong. Okay, so thank you.